now, your KSBW weather forecast with meteorologist Holt Hanley. Good morning. Overall, that June gloom is back. We see those foggy conditions in Salinas right now. Also saw that in places like Santa Cruz, Monterey Peninsula. Does look like that'll be staying around for the next hour or two and then even into the afternoon for some spots like the Monterey Peninsula. But then most of the central coast will be transitioning to mostly sunny skies by the time we get into this afternoon. Now, even though it looks very cool out there, temperatures right now not all that bad. Low to mid 50s, so pretty mild for this time of the day. It's this afternoon where we're really going to start heating up. Central coast doesn't look like we'll be getting into the triple digits, but definitely some warm temperatures out there. Those triple digits are more for the Central Valley, all the way from Redding down to Bakersfield, Palm Springs, 109 throughout the day today. Now, because of that, we do have that heat advisory in place. Now, it's interesting to zoom into the Central Coast to see where it is. Unlike the last heat advisory, it's not in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It's more for those southern and inland areas you see right there, but it does stretch into San Benito County and then also into Greenfield and King City. And then it looks like tomorrow is going to be very similar temperatures to what we have today. So that advisory does last until 10 p.m. on Monday. But yeah, overall, we do know there's one cooling center in King City could be a good place to go today. Or if you can get to the coast, as we saw in that live camera, much cooler conditions there, especially once those onshore winds pick up in the afternoon. Now, when it comes to overall temperatures, Right now, there's all that warm air over California. As I mentioned, that'll be sticking around throughout the day Monday. But good news for all those inland spots. Throughout Tuesday, we're going to see some cold air move into California. And that'll actually drop some of our cities down by 10, maybe even 15 degrees, bringing us actually below average instead of the highly above average that we do have right now. And then with all that warm air, we also have some very dry air. You just notice that with that brown color right there, very low relative humidities. And right off the bat, first thing you might think about when I say that, warm air, dry air, you might be thinking about fire danger. The one factor that's working in our favor throughout the day today is it's not one of those very gusty offshore wind events that you do get more later in the season. Now, if you look at those wind directions, it's coming from the ocean. So what that does, takes some of that moisture and that cooler air, pushes it into the coast. Whereas when you get an offshore wind event, that takes the very dry conditions here and warm and then pushes them there. So wind direction, one thing working in our factor, although I'm certainly going to still keep an eye on things like fire danger because it certainly will be hot and dry out there. And then we will have some gusts picking up in the Salinas Valley, about 20 to 30 this afternoon. It at least just doesn't doesn't look all that windy in the Santa Cruz Mountains where we have a lot more of those dry fuels. Then in the forecast highs, still warm in the Santa Cruz Mountains even though we don't have that advisory. A lot of places getting into the 90s. Great beach day in Santa Cruz as always this time of the year. 98 in Morgan Hill and then warmest location as you would expect, King City at that 99. Makes sense we're under that advisory. And then 75 in Monterey. Cooler conditions where we'll see that fog sticking around a lot longer. Great day to go down to Big Sur though. And then in the eight day forecast, looks like we have mostly sunny conditions for the coast, at least in the afternoons over the next three days. And then there's that cool down that we're all looking forward to. Yeah, foggy out there this morning, very typical uh, summer weather for the coast. A little different than we've had the past weeks where it's been quite warm there. Yeah, it was, it's been different waking up to all those cloudy conditions. Makes the beach a bit colder in the mornings. Thanks Holt. Continuing coverage on Wednesday's shark attack in Pacific Grove. As we said earlier, the swimmer is listed in good condition and efforts are now underway to officially recognize several people who came to his aid as heroes. We get that part of the story from Action News 8 reporter Felix Cortez. These three good Samaritans being hailed as heroes for coming to the rescue of Steve Broomer, a swimmer who was attacked by a great white shark off Lover's Point Wednesday morning. Efforts now underway to nominate them for an American Red Cross Heroes Award. So we're looking at um, honoring them, their heroic, you know, individuals in our community um, and in their home community. I'm sure the same thing's going to you know, be able to happen. But what they did, 
not a lot of people would do that knowing that there was a shark still in the water, um, but they didn't think twice. They went in and rescued this gentleman, and because of that, he's alive today. After being brought to shore by the Good Samaritans, the 62-year-old Broomer underwent two hours of surgery. He's currently listed in good condition. His doctor said had it not been for the Good Samaritans, Broomer might not have survived the attack. Yes, they were extremely helpful. They're actually the real heroes of the situation. Without someone on the beach ready to go out and bring him back in and then people on the beach ready with tourniquets, he, he could have also lost his life just and just in that fact that there was no one available or if there was no one able to bring him in, he could have died in the water. The bystanders were crucial in saving his life. The Good Samaritans are from your left. Heath Braddock, a surfer from Moss Landing. Amy Johns, a nurse from Folsom. And her husband, Paul Bandy, a Sacramento police officer. All were in the water that day and Bandy said he did what he's trained to do. As a police officer, I respond to emergencies all the time. so. I don't think there was ever a question of whether or not we were going to go. It was just how fast we were going to be able to get there. The couple were in town celebrating their wedding anniversary, staying here at the Colton Inn. In a show of goodwill, the hotel did not charge them for their entire stay. Reporting from Monterey, I'm Felix Cortez, KSBW, Action News 8. When we come back, we're going to check up the weather, plus how a group of friends is saving puppies and delivering supplies in Ukraine. Next. Now, your KSBW weather forecast with meteorologist Holt Hanley. Good morning right now. Starting out the day with some of those classic June gloom conditions with those cloudy skies that you can see right there from that Soledad Palo Escrito camera. Now, the thing I noticed, though, is once those clouds burn off, it looks like there's nothing but sunshine right above that. So that is an indication of what we're going to transition to in just a few hours here. Now, those clouds will be sticking around a bit longer for places like the Monterey Peninsula though. And then because of a lot of that cloud cover, 
Even though this afternoon is expected to be fairly warm out there, right now still just mild in the low to mid 50s. And then when we look at the winds, also very calm right now. We were looking at one camera of the ocean earlier. Water looked very glassy. You can see why, just zero miles per hour in Monterey. Now it doesn't look like the winds will be coming up all that much this afternoon, especially for the coast, just about five to 15 miles per hour. Places like Salinas down to King City, that's where we could see some gusts up to 15, 25, maybe even some up over 30. But it's the direction of these winds that is, that is actually working in our favor when it comes to some of that heat. You notice a lot of those little arrows are coming from the ocean onto land. So that just takes some of those cool temperatures that are over the ocean and pushes them into our coastal cities. So if you're in one of those inland locations that doesn't feel that onshore ocean effect as much, just a quick drive could cool you down significantly. Now, you may want to cool down significantly because just looking at those forecast highs across the state, it is a bit warm out there. We've seen this warming trend over the last couple of days, much of the Central Valley back into the triple digits. I wouldn't rule out triple digits for the Central Coast, but as of right now, it looks like a lot of our warmest cities will just be in the high 90s. And I say just in the high 90s, that's certainly still warm out there. So could be a good idea to try to stay cool. I know there's a cooling center in King City, or as I mentioned, quick drive to the coast should be nice, especially this morning, very cool out there. And then we do have that heat advisory in places like Greenfield, King City, but most of that is isolated for the Central Valley where we do have those triple digits. Now, some good news is on the way. Not yet for tomorrow. Looks like tomorrow's still warm, but then we will start cooling down on Tuesday. And then the rest of the week looks fairly cool right there. Now, something that's not the best news when it comes to wildfire danger is that ridge of high pressure and dry air that's over us. That's going to dry out some of the fuels as well. But overall, I would say the main thing I'm thinking about with fire danger right now is the fact that although 95% of the state is still in that severe drought category, we do have those favorable winds still. It's when we get later in the season when those fuels dry out even more and then you get those big offshore wind events that I really start to worry. But overall today, cloudy, can just transitioning to those sunny skies later and then luckily it does look like we have that cool down as we get into midweek a little relief for those inland spots yeah any possibility of dry lightning is not a good thing to hear right now yeah that was interesting to watch that thunderstorm event last year so good that it's not coinciding with all the dry air right now thanks Holt Turning now to the war in Ukraine, since war broke out, many Ukrainian civilians have thrown themselves headlong into the dangerous task of delivering supplies. Yulia and her friends are loading up their armored van. Food, medicine, water for frontline villages. That and protective gear for the troops. Before the war, Yulia was a model and worked in local government. Now she's a volunteer. I didn't consider leaving as an option, she says. Of course, I'm staying in my country to help as much as possible. During a drive back from the front in May, Yulia was badly injured when her truck crashed under shelling. She spent two restless months in hospital. They were holding me in hospital and I told them I have work to do, she recalls. I was coordinating deliveries on the phone. I had no right to sit on my hands. First stop on this day, a military position by the road. All of this has been donated by people in Ukraine. Here, the troops offer a quick appraisal of world leaders. Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson. <laughs> what about Biden? Joe Biden. Oh, Joe Biden, yes. <laughs> Joe Biden. Olaf Scholz. Scholz, Scholz. The next stop, a village perilously close to the fighting. They have to hand out the aid as quickly as possible because they don't want people to get together because we're just a few kilometers from Russian lines. Spirits here still buoyant. I stayed because of the animals, Natasha tells me. I'm responsible for all the abandoned animals on this street. More than 50 cats and around 20 dogs. 
At our final stop, they drop off more supplies for the soldiers and feed stray dogs. They had planned to evacuate a family fleeing from behind Russian lines, but they didn't show up. The soldiers here say overnight there was heavy shelling, Russian drones often on the prowl overhead. My mind tells me I should be afraid, says Yulia, but we can't leave them behind. Them is a dog and two litters of puppies, born in the trenches. One of the mother dogs was killed by Russian artillery, the little ones, orphans. Once loaded, we're off to the city of Zaporizhia. We're out of the danger zone. Once we get to the city, they'll take the mother, who's been injured in a blast, to a vet. They found homes for some of these puppies, but not all. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, Zaporizhia, southern Ukraine. Time now for Action News Sports. The San Francisco Giants getting a big win at home over the Cincinnati Reds. Four different players hit home runs for the Giants, including Jock Peterson with a solo shot in the fifth. Giants beat the Reds 9-2. This series wraps up this afternoon at 1.05. 49ers quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo is expected to start throwing again soon, a few months after having surgery on his injured right shoulder back in March. ESPN is reporting that Jimmy G is expected to throw over the next few weeks after he's been cleared. Garoppolo has been excused by the team from mandatory minicamp while he's rehabbing that shoulder. That's left second-year QB Trey Lance taking snaps with the first team. Here on the Central Coast, a tough loss for Monterey Bay FC against their Northern California opponent, Sacramento Republic FC. The Union took the lead in the first half after an own goal by Sacramento. They kept the lead until Sac scored twice in a three-minute span, getting a goal in the 74th minute before another in the 76th. Monterey Bay FC loses last night's match 2-1. to one. They'll remain at home and host New Mexico United next weekend. Don't go anywhere. We have our adoptable pet of the weekend when we return.
Time for this morning's Pet of the Weekend segment. This handsome guy is Pono. He's a two-year-old pit bull Siberian Husky mix with an exuberant, energetic personality. Pono has tons of energy to burn and would love to be your running partner. He's very sweet and loves to play fetch as well. And if you're interested in adopting Pono or you want to see pets available for adoption, just visit the SPCA website at spcamc.org. And if you're already a pet owner, we want to see them. This is Honey Bear. She was adopted through the Northern California Sled Dog Rescue. Now, Honey Bear loves getting dirty on adventures with her forever family. If you'd like to see your pet on television, use the hashtag KSBWPets on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We'll show off some of the best photos you share here on Action News 8 Weekend Sunrise. When we come back, your morning's top stories, plus a fake rental scam sweeping across the country. The red flags to look out for. Now look at this morning's top stories for a second day in a row. Rallies and celebrations have erupted nationwide after the Supreme Court voted to overturn Roe versus Wade. The Biden administration says the president is asking the Justice Department to challenge state laws, restricting the right to travel to seek an abortion. A sideshow on River Road in front of Las Palmas and Salinas led to several high-speed chases and a felony arrest. Drivers were seen doing donuts and blocking traffic. Residents began to confront the reckless drivers and two people were injured. The 17-year-old suspect who beat the victims was eventually tracked down in Gonzales. He was arrested for felony charges for evading police. And a brush fire in the Santa Cruz Mountains is now 75% contained. It's burned one and a half acres since it started yesterday afternoon. It's burning near Hutchinson Road west of Highway 17. The cause under investigation. Here now with a check of the weather, meteorologist Holt Hanley. Yeah, we're going to be watching things like those types of fires throughout the day today because it is going to be very hot and dry. Good news, it's at least not going to be overly windy, so that will be working in our favor. But then overall, when you look at what it looks like right now, if you're down below this cloud layer, you, want, you would not expect some of those warm temperatures that we're going to have later today. But 
Once that burns off, it's nothing but sunshine left up there. So right now, very mild temperatures, just low to mid 50s. But then as we get into this afternoon, we're going to continue that warming trend that we have had the last couple of days. Looks like much of the Central Valley is back into the triple digits. Doesn't look like the Central Coast is going to get that hot because we have those onshore winds pushing in at least some cooler air due to our coastal proximity. But we definitely will be on the warm side today. And because of that, we do actually have that heat advisory in place. Interesting to look at where this is in place. Most of it for that Central Valley where all those triple digits were, but does stretch into places like King City and Greenfield. And then it is in place until 10 p.m. on Monday because it does look like those warm temperatures will stick around throughout the next couple days. Although cool down on Tuesday and then it looks like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we stay much more moderate. So we only have two more days of that somewhat extreme heat to get through for those inland areas. Although you can't always just drive to the coast throughout the day today. It should just be beautiful conditions in places like Santa Cruz. Once those clouds do burn off, we're still a bit on the cold side right now. That has been the case the last couple days as those June gloom conditions have returned. But that sunshine will be coming out later this afternoon. And then for the mountains and valleys, I would say your big thing to think about is just some of that heat. And then you will also have some of those wind gusts coming up about 20 to 30 miles per hour in King City. So it's a good thing we don't have that in the Santa Cruz Mountains because if we were mixing those windy conditions with our warm temperatures and that dry air, that's where I would start to be very worried about fire danger. But windiest spots down in Lower Salinas where there's not as much of those dry fuels. Now overall, when, it looks at, when we look at those forecast highs though, nice in, uh, that's, that's actually a bit warm for most people in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Low to mid 90s right there, 79 in Santa Cruz though, so that should be a beach day right there. Also warm in places like Morgan Hill, Gilroy, but right there you can just perfectly see that contrast. 98 in Morgan Hill, 64 in Moss Landing. Similar contrast between places like Salinas and King City, about a, a 28 degree difference right there. And then Monterey Peninsula, those cities staying under the fog will remain cooler than places like Big Sur or Carmel Valley where that sunshine will come out. And then eight day forecast, looks like there's more sunshine over the next three days. But what everybody in those inland spots is looking forward to, that cool down Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Absolutely. Near triple digit, it's no fun. Yeah, the mid-80s, a lot more comfortable. <laughs> a lot better. Thanks, Holt. Well, new at sunrise, housing scams are trending across the country. It happens through online sellers on sites like Facebook, showing real properties for rent. But the person making the post is not the actual owner. Action News 8 reporter Alice Jones spoke to a woman who says she lost money in a deal that started to feel more like a scam. It was like right down the road from where I work. So I was like, this is perfect. It's discounted price right where we need to be great. An Edmund couple losing money after paying a deposit on a rental house. Experts saying issues like this are a growing trend on social media. The possibility of getting scammed definitely is higher. They'll price it about 200, maybe $300 less than what we're asking. So that way it's more enticing, you know, a cheaper price. The couple said they paid a $75 application fee through Cash App. Then we're told they'd get the keys after one more payment. As you have to pay um, the security deposit, which was like $350. And we were like, okay, that's even more money. We've not seen the inside of the house. Like we don't have keys in hand. So they backed out of the deal. When we backed out, she's like, I'll send you the money uh, tomorrow. And then tomorrow came and she's like, I'll send it on Monday. And then Monday came and she still hadn't sent it back. Tried to reach out to her, found out she had blocked our numbers, blocked us on Facebook. Later growing skeptical when they say that same woman posted properties in more than just one city. It, her name pops up all over the country of her saying, I'm a private landlord and I'm offering rental properties in Myrtle Beach. There's posts in Houston, there's posts in Austin, there's posts literally all over the country. Elise Jones reporting realtors say some red flags to look for out on social media are long backstories about why the house is for rent, if the name and number on the sign is different from their Facebook name, and asking for any type of deposit before showing you inside. Coming up, we'll get one more check of your weather, but first a live look outside from Sky Cam 8 Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. We'll be right back with more coverage you can count on.
Here are your winning lottery numbers. Time now for this morning's Hot Shots. Here's a guy who's especially talented when it comes to catching marshmallows. David Rush is so good at it, he's shooting for a Guinness World Record. The marshmallows are fired at his face using a little catapult. And while it sounds like fun and games, David says there is some risk. He's actually managed to draw blood when the marshmallows hit his teeth. I was looking at it and like, wait, what's this red dot on these marshmallows? And I realized some of them were bloody. Ooh, is it worth it? I don't know. If David reaches his goal, it won't be his first world record. He holds 129 Guinness World Records already for things like balancing 101 rolls of toilet paper on his head to slicing apples while juggling three knives. I want to see the apple juggling with the knives. All right, I'm going to challenge him for that marshmallow <laughs> one. I'm going to start training tomorrow. <laughs> But uh, weather-wise, pretty classic conditions for June. We're just starting out. It looks very cold out there, that fog along the coast, some of those cloudy conditions. But we will be seeing that burn off as we get into the afternoon. And then it's the warm temperatures, especially for those inland locations. So very classic forecast for what you would expect. Hottest spot, King City at that 99 right there. When it comes to the eight day, it looks like we'll have mostly sunny conditions for the next few days and then cool down Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That'll be great for those inland spots. Feels so nice to get a bit cooler. Oh yeah, and then our weather kid today is Janelle, and I love this one. She says, it is sunny and I went to the beach and went surfing. Oh, that's perfect for you, Holt. Oh yeah, it was great the last few days, so hopefully Janelle made it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Holt. And thank you for watching the first hour of Action News 8 Weekend Sunrise. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back with more news and weather coverage you can count on. Rallies erupt across the country after the Supreme Court votes to overturn Roe v. Wade and more big decisions could be on the way. A historic Supreme Court term. I'm Christopher Salas in Washington with the cases still to be decided. And warm summer temperatures finding some parts on the central coast today where it's expected to really heat up straight ahead.
coverage you can count on. This is KSBW Action News 8. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ariana Hasso. Welcome to Action News 8 Weekend Sunrise. Let's get a check of the weather with meteorologist Holt Hanley. What's today looking like, Holt? Yeah, I'd say that heat up is a good way to put it. Some of those warm temperatures, especially for those inland spots like King City. You wouldn't exactly expect it. Just looking at those live cameras right now, though, we have those very cloudy, foggy conditions. Saw this coming in last night in Salina. Said about eh, maybe 6.30 this fog moved in and still over us right now. Should start to pull back over the next few hours. Although there are some cities along the Monterey Peninsula where we will see that hanging out all day long. But again, that's our sky conditions. The big story everyone's thinking about though are those temperatures. So we'll just focus on that right now. Very mild, just low to mid 50s. It's as we get into this afternoon that you start to feel some of that warm up and especially in those inland spots. We're at least not as warm as the Central Valley where they're in the triple digits in some places 106 in Fresno. We'll be more in the high 90s, although I wouldn't rule out the triple digits. And just to kind of paint that picture, we do have that heat advisory in place in places like King City, Greenfield, a bunch of San Benito County. Nice to see that it's not in the Santa Cruz Mountains, though. That's where we have a lot of those very dry fuels, and you had a lot more worry about fire danger. So overall, I'd say today, very good day to stay cool. Tomorrow as well. And then it looks like we'll be starting to cool down as we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So there is some relief on the way. But overall, for the coast, cloudy conditions. I think that's the main part of your forecast. For those inland spots, it's that heat. And then looking at those forecast highs, 99 looks to be the hottest spot in King City. So very close to the triple digits. I think today would be a great day to escape to the coast. Should be nice there once that cloud layer burns off. And then a little relief on the way. So looking forward to that. Okay, on another warm day. Okay. Yeah, very classic June. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Holt. Um, for a second day in a row, rallies and celebrations have erupted nationwide after the Supreme Court voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. In Texas and Georgia, people gathered at their state capitol. In Los Angeles, demonstrators marched through the streets of downtown. And in D.C., crowds gathered in front of the Supreme Court. We get more from Action News 8 reporter Christine Sloan. The Supreme Court's decision ending constitutional protections for abortion is sparking protests across the country. In Rhode Island, a candidate for state Senate says her opponent, a Providence police officer, punched her at a rally. That officer has now been charged with simple assault. Outside the Supreme Court, two people were arrested for destruction of property, while some celebrated the court's decision. I honestly cried tears of joy. It's been something that we have been waiting for for so long. Justice Samuel Alito writing Roe was egregiously wrong and deeply damaging. Roe was on a collision course with the Constitution from the day it was decided. Some are now expressing concern after Justice Clarence Thomas argued in his concurring opinion the Supreme Court should reconsider other rulings codifying rights to contraception access and same-sex marriage. There's a very good chance that probably not in the next year or two, but within a few years, issues like contraception or same-sex marriage uh, could actually be subject to revisiting. Abortion is now illegal for 31 million Americans in at least eight states, with 18 more likely to ban or severely restrict abortions in the coming days or weeks. Planned Parenthood is now filing a lawsuit in Utah to block the state's trigger ban. There's a lot of Utahns who don't agree with the trigger law that they put in Minnesota, the governor signed an executive so order ways. protecting women who seek abortions in his state from legal repercussions in their own state. And the Biden administration says the president is asking the Justice Department to challenge state laws restricting the right to travel to seek an abortion. Planned Parenthood filed a lawsuit in Utah to block a trigger law banning abortions following the court's decision. The organization is expected to request a temporary restraining order against the state's ban on abortion at any point in pregnancy. The lawsuit is not expected to be the only one of its kind, as experts predict other states will likely follow suit. And the high court's term isn't over as fallout continues after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. The court still has several key cases to be decided. Action News 8 reporter Christopher Salas with some of the cases legal experts have their eyes on. And the court still has a handful of cases it needs to rule on on what has been already one of the most historic terms. 
A major First Amendment case could be decided on Monday, Kennedy versus Bremerton School District. A Washington State football coach was fired after praying on the 50-yard line after games. Joe Kennedy says the district violated his freedom of expression. And I made, uh, you know, a commitment with God that, hey, I'm going to give you the glory after every game. I'm not going to hide who I am. I'm not going to hide my faith. The district says his prayer violated the Establishment Clause, their right to not promote religion. Legal experts say these two First Amendment principles have been at odds with each other in several other cases, with the now conservative court likely to side with Kennedy. It's been 220 years since Thomas Jefferson used the, the phrase a wall of separation between church and state. Today, the Supreme Court is moving more in the direction of changing that wall to a speed bump. Notable remaining cases include Biden versus Texas, an immigration case dealing with the Trump administration's stay in Mexico policy. Then there's West Virginia versus the EPA, questioning the federal government's role in regulating greenhouse gas emissions. The court's ruling could have a major impact on the Biden administration's climate agenda. As mentioned, some of these cases could be decided as early as Monday, as it is an opinion day for the court. In Washington, I'm Christopher Salas, KSBW, Action News 8. New video this morning of a sideshow on River Road in front of Las Palmas. The incident led to a high speed chase and two arrests. Several, according to the Monterey County Sheriff's Office, about 40 to 50 people were racing, setting off fireworks, doing donuts, and blocking traffic. Residents began to confront the reckless drivers, and two people were injured, leading to the first arrest. The sideshow then moved into Salinas, and police. And, de and deputies followed with pursuits reaching 95 miles an hour down North Main Street. A 17 year old Gonzalez resident was arrested. And President Biden has signed into law the most sweeping legislation aimed at preventing gun violence in 30 years. It comes after a string of mass shootings in the country. The legislation provides grants to states for red flag laws, which includes $750 million for mental health, school safety and crisis intervention programs. It toughens background checks to include juvenile records, and it also closes the quote, closes the quote boyfriend loophole by keeping gun, guns away from unmarried dating partners convicted of abuse. The bill was passed by the Senate on Thursday and when then and then the House on Friday. It does not ban assault weapons and it also doesn't require background checks for all gun purchases. President Biden says the bill proves that Democrats and Republicans can find common ground on important issues. From Columbine to Sandy Hook to Charleston, Orlando, Las Vegas, Parkland, El Paso, Atlanta, Buffalo, Uvalde. And for the shootings that happen every day in the streets that are mass shootings that we don't even hear about. The number of people killed every day in the streets. Their message to us was do something. I don't know how many times we heard that. Just do something. For God's sake, just do something. Well, today we did. President Biden has begun a five-day dip diplomatic trip in Europe today, meeting with G7 and NATO leaders during his trip. The main topics of discussion, Russia's war in Ukraine and tackling a global food and energy crisis. More from Action News 8 reporter Christopher Salas. President Biden touching down in Germany for a high-stakes G7 meeting. The president's team calling it a watershed moment. Not just for European security but for alignment like we've never seen before and how we confront some of the biggest challenges of our time. Challenges include the ongoing war in Ukraine and fear of global recession. The G7 leaders will discuss ways to ease rising prices globally while continuing to put pressure on Putin for invading Ukraine. So what the G7 will be looking at is how do we pull some of this pressure forward to get more action out of him so we can end this crisis sooner with less deaths, deaths of innocent uh, civilians. The nation's already agreeing to ban Russian gold imports. The president on Twitter said, Russia rakes in tens of billions of dollars from the sale of its gold, its second largest export. Russia's largest export is energy, and another big topic of discussion will be transitioning Europe from Russian energy to other sources. In Washington, I'm Christopher Salas, KSBW, Action News 8. 
now to the war in Ukraine. Rescue efforts are underway after explosions in Kyiv, Ukraine on Sunday. A number of people are believed to be trapped under all the rubble. At least two people have been hospitalized. You can see there's video of the people being rescued and taken into ambulances. Crews are continuing to dig through the debris. And Ukraine is now using advanced rocket launcher systems supplied by the U.S. The top Ukrainian commander posted this video showing the weapon being used for the first time. There's no word on what, when or where it happened. According to the country's defense ministry, the weapons arrived in Ukraine last week. And still ahead this morning, coming up, new video of a small brush fire burning in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Plus, it's one of the largest pride events in the nation. We give you an inside look at the festivities underway in the Bay Area. But first, here's a live look outside. Keep it right here with more coverage you can count on. Containment is growing on a small brush fire in the Santa Cruz Mountains. The so-called rock fire is now 75% contained. It's burned one and a half acres since it started around 4.30 yesterday afternoon. It's burning near Hutchinson Road west of Highway 17. The cause is still under investigation. And in Riverside County, a fast-growing brush fire forced dozens of homes to evacuate. What's being called the Union Fire has burned 110 acres and is 0% contained. Crews say they have stopped forward progress and no word yet on what caused the fire. Firefighters are also mopping up in Carl Carlsbad after a 10-acre fire there. It started yesterday and forced some nearby homes to evacuate. Police have arrested a 59-year-old man on arson charges suspected of starting the fire and no injury. Thankfully, no injuries or damaged structures were reported. And Lover's Point Beach in Pacific Grove is back open days after a man was attacked by a great white shark, sending him to the hospital. Des despite the beach being back open, the scene in the water looks a little bit different than before. 
And it was actually weird, like a ghost town coming through here for the last three days because oh, really? no one was down here. Lover's Point Beach closed and empty for days after a traumatic shark attack landed one man in the hospital with major injuries. I've lived here 10 years and it was pretty, pretty incredible to hear about a shark attack out here. Um, I've never heard of a shark attack out here, uh, so it was scary actually to me. A scary scene leaving some locals distraught. I definitely shut people up. Yeah. Everybody started talking about it and walking by and, oh, did you hear about the shark attack? And, yeah. Thornhill points out that although visitors are back at the beach, the amount of people out is usually much more. I think uh, people are going to be on edge for probably a little while. And then you know how after a while it goes away. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, as you can see, there's not a lot of people swimming right now. While others say they're cautious as usual, but enjoying being back in the sand. Yeah, it was a really sad, horrible incident, but you know, we're back out at the beach having a good time and you know, not going deep into the water. And beach employees say despite the awful incident, they still expect the crowds to flock in the coming weeks. I think people are um, maybe a, a little bit more apprehensive and like under, understandably so, but um, I think, I think it, it, enjoying the um, beach is um, still a definite possibility for the summer. And in San Francisco, the 52nd annual Pride celebration is underway, kicking off with a day of celebrations in the city. Hundreds of thousands of people are turning out this weekend for the largest gathering of the LGBT community in the nation. Action News 8 reporter Alyssa Gord has more. Well, we're still a day out from the parade, but there are already thousands of people here in San Francisco for this weekend's Pride festivities. And they're eager, they're enjoying the sunshine and great weather, and they're happy to be here in person for the first time in two years. Are you ready to get this party started? After two years off due to the pandemic, San Francisco Pride weekend is in full swing. Up close and personal. So this is a time when people can reconnect, and I think a lot of people need that healing and a reconnection. For some, this is a new experience. It's my first Pride, and I'm super gay. For others, it's the return of a tradition. We just love the the sense of community that we get at San Francisco Pride. Michelle Roche drove hours to be here. Like many others we spoke with, she's upset about Roe v. Wade being overturned, which made coming to Pride feel even more important. To sort of be in the community where people are probably of like minds is also a comfort in a time when I feel sad about something that's happening. In a time that can feel heavy, many are taking comfort in the community and acceptance that comes with pride. The more we can make everyone included and feel comfortable in their own skin and be who they are, like the better it is. Like that's the whole point about the Bay Area. Alyssa Gord reporting for us back here on the Central Coast in honor of Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. A special art show took place in Salinas. Artists from the Madonna Gardens Assisted Living and Memory Care showed off their paintings. Many of them were for sale. Proceeds from the event go to Walk to End Alzheimer's. More than $650 was raised. And still ahead on Action News 8 Weekend Sunrise, your KSBW weekend forecast. But first, a live look from Monterey from above the Portola Hotel and Spa. We'll add your current conditions and we'll be right back with more coverage. You
your KSBW weather forecast with meteorologist Holt Hanley. Good morning. Well, that classic June gloom is back. Certainly I've felt that on the coast the last couple days, but even from that Soledad Palo Escrito camera, you can see all those low clouds out there. A lot of fog on those live cameras of the beaches we've been looking at. Now, once those clouds burn off, though, you can see it's nothing but blue skies above that. So we will transition to mostly sunny skies as we get into this afternoon. But those are our sky conditions. Main thing everybody's thinking about are what those temperatures are doing throughout the day today. Right now, just mild, partly because of all those clouds, just low to mid 50s. It's as we get into this afternoon that we're really going to start seeing things warm up. Along the central coast, looks like our warmest temperatures will be in the high 90s, but you can see throughout much of the Central Valley back into those triple digits as we continue that warming trend that we have had the last couple of days. The good news is that a lot of our cities are right near the coast and that's where it's a lot cooler because we get that onshore flow. Those spots staying right in the 70s. You can see San Francisco 70 right there. So nice natural air conditioning with those cooler ocean conditions being pushed in by the winds. Now, with that being said, if you are farther inland, you don't get as much of that cooling effect. So places like King City, Greenfield, that's where we have that heat advisory. And you can see that it's not for the Santa Cruz Mountains. That's at least good compared to that last heat advisory we had, which covered almost the entire central coast. And then it's also, I'd say, good to see that it will be expiring relatively soon. It's sticking around until 10 p.m. on Monday. So tomorrow, still quite hot out there. But then there is finally some relief on the way. You can actually see that cold air slowly moving in, making its way into the Pacific Northwest. That'll be nice because places like Washington and Oregon actually have that heat advisory as well. And then I'm sure just everybody in those inland locations that are going to be a bit hot today will certainly welcome that cool air as it moves in. Again, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, looks like we're back to more normal conditions there. Now with all that warm air, we also have very dry air as well. That brown color just re represents not a lot of moisture out there. So the first thing you might be thinking about when I say warm air, dry air is things like fire danger. We have had a couple little fires pop up over the last couple of days. Now the one thing that is working in our favor, overall I would say certainly we'll be keeping an eye on that fire danger today, but we do have one factor working kind of with us and it's the wind direction. You can see it's coming from the ocean, so that takes some of that cooler air that you get over the water and then pushes it in. Whereas when you get those offshore wind events where it's coming from the Central Valley and moving in, that's where you get a lot of that very high fire danger because it pushes in those triple digits that hopefully we won't be in throughout the day today. So overall for the coast, I'd say the main part of your forecast are those clouds in the morning transitioning to mostly sunny skies in the afternoon. For the inland areas, I would say it's a combination of that heat, especially in places like King City, but then you also will have slightly windier conditions. Some gusts today in King City getting up to 30 this afternoon. Looks like not as much in the Santa Cruz Mountains though, which is a good thing because we do have some warm temperatures up there, low to mid 90s. Should be a great beach day in Santa Cruz, 79, but much cooler in Aptos where it's just 61 there today. And then also warm, it's very interesting to see that contrast between those inland spots. Morgan Hill 98, Moss Landing 64. So it does tell you that if you are very hot inland, quick drive to the coast and it will certainly, certainly cool you down. 99 in King City, that's our hottest spot today. Monterey Peninsula, bit cooler because those clouds will be hanging out longer than other spots. And then we transition to those mostly sunny skies in the afternoon and then Cooling, cooling trend will be nice. Okay, so it seems like a perfect day to either take a trip to San Francisco or to Monterey. Yeah, exactly. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Holt. Well, money is on the way for federal firefighters. They've been waiting on a pay raise that was signed into law last year. It was uh, it was a part of a of the bipartisan infrastructure law that the White House delivered this week, calling it a matter of national security. Action News 8 reporter Christi Christian Balderas has the details. This affects 16,000 federal firefighters across the nation. And so this comes as very good news to them because we are at the start of what could be a very busy wildfire season. On the Central Coast, about 300 federal firefighters protect the over 2 million acres that make up the Los Padres National Forest. 
It's a dangerous and difficult job with a starting pay of $15 nationwide, prompting many federal firefighters to plead for more money or leave altogether. According to Forest Services Chief Randy Moore, overall firefighter staffing is at 90% but drops as low as 50% in parts of California, Oregon, and Washington. In response, the Biden administration allocated $600 million from the infrastructure law. It was held up as the president tried to determine what geographic areas would get paid until now. What you're seeing is an actual, finally, uh, a comprehension by the federal government to professionalize and formalize the wild li wildland federal firefighter, something that should have been done a long time ago, something we've continued to fight for. All federal firefighters nationwide can expect an additional $20,000 or 50% increase of their base pay. Payments will process in the coming weeks with additional payments in July and August. But this is a temporary solution that covers two years. People are finally uh, feeling like um, our agencies are making good on some promises. But I, I will say that they're cautiously optimistic. A group that advocates for federal firefighters has been pushing for the passing of their own bill, the TIMS Act. It would introduce a new permanent pay scale and other benefits. Um, this is unsustainable. We can't just have these pay supplements to entice people to be that we can recruit and retain and promote. Um, that doesn't get us there. So it does fall short of our expectations and the expectations of wildland firefighters in the field. Also include Still ahead this morning on, on our Health Watch, a hidden danger while barbecuing. The warning from doctors and the symptoms to look out for. Plus, the new safe sleeping guidelines for babies. More weekend coverage you can count on from Action News 8. On the Health Watch, around 3,500 babies die in sleep-related incidences each year in the U.S., but many of those deaths can be prevented. The American Academy of Pediatri Pediatrics has put out updated guidelines to help babies sleep safely. Action News 8 reporter Mandy Gaither has a look at the recommendations. For the first time in six years, the American Academy of Pediatrics has updated its safe sleep guidelines for babies. There are lots of factors that play into the dangers. 
The AAP says co-sleeping under any circumstances is not safe for infant sleep, whether it's on the couch or a bed. We recognize sometimes you may unintentionally fall asleep with the baby. So I recommend that, that parents create kind of a safe sleep zone in the bed when they do this feeding to move away the pillows, the loose bedding, things that, that could create that added risk. Parents can also set alarms to help remind them to take their child back to the crib. The AAP says babies should sleep in the same room with their parents for at least six months separately on a firm, flat surface covered in a snug fitted sheet with no added bedding or bumpers. You want to avoid anything that's soft, plush, or loose. Babies start to move around. We don't want things getting up over their heads. We don't want overheating. We don't want things to obstruct the nose and mouth that increase the risk of suffocation. The AAP also warns against the use of commercial devices that claim to reduce the risk of SIDS or other sleep-related issues, including wearable monitors. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Two vaccine boosters that were updated to target the Omicron variant, variant are showing a much higher immune response than the current COVID-19 vaccine. That conclusion comes from companies Pfizer and BioNTech about their new booster candidates. Findings show a fourth booster with Omicron modified vaccine had a substantially higher immune response. Overall, the improvement, improvements were were increases of nine to more than 19 fold, depending on the dose. Pfizer and BioNTech will present its data to a federal vaccine advisory committee, which will vote on new vaccines for the fall. And COVID-19 vaccines prevented close to 20 million deaths in the first year of first year of vaccine.